Welcome to a virtual coaching session for PMD Pro Project Management for Development Professionals. This session is on the topic of roles and accountability. The tool that's used is called the RACI matrix. That's R A C I. And these sessions in the coaching series are intended for people who have completed the PMD Pro 1 course and have passed the examination. I'd like to start this session by asking each of you to reflect on this question. How have you applied PMD Pro 1 as well as the PMD Pro tools and knowledge in your work recently. What is the purpose of a RACI matrix? So think back to the PMD Pro 1 course and the PMD Pro guide and come up with an answer to this question. I'll provide some answers to that question as we go through the session today. Let's just start uh, with an easy question. Using the RACI matrix, which phase do we use the RACI matrix the most? Yes, it's in the planning phase that we use the RACI matrix and it's also used in the implementation uh, because planning and implementation, remember, are an iterative process. I've also shown that the RACI is used in monitoring and evaluation and specifically in control because the management of stakeholders and the communication to stakeholders is often an extremely important part of controlling a project. Finally, I circled transition because examination of how the participation and the roles of stakeholders were actually used can be part of the reflection process to improve the future development uh, and interventions. Uh, primarily, the RACI is about managing stakeholder engagement. And it's said that a project seldom works on its own. As the complexity of projects increases, the web of relationship expands until it could potentially include a number of groups. And I've just listed a few here. Community groups, government ministries, suppliers, local non-governmental organizations or community-based uh, organizations, universities, colleges, institutes, faith-based organizations, and others. So the RACI, its main purpose is to ensure there is clarity regarding the roles, responsibilities, authority, and communications of the different project actors. Now take a look at this graphic and I have put question marks where the headings for the columns and the rows go and answer this question. What is the title, the name that goes at the head of each column or row for each column and each row on a RACI matrix?
you'll see that in the vertical column you have a list of the task or the activities and work that will be done by the project and then across the horizontal you have the RACI responsible accountable consulted and informed and I'll go through those in more detail in the coming slides looking at the vertical column first I'd like you to reflect on this question how do you identify the task that will be entered on the vertical column in the RACI matrix. The answer to that question is extremely important and foundational in the project management uh, literature or knowledge base that you get the list of tasks that are to be entered into the RACI from the activity schedule. The tool is called the work breakdown structure. So you'll use all of the details that came from the work breakdown structure and you'll assign roles to them. This particular graphic here is called a Gantt chart and it includes more information than just the work breakdown structure and occasionally I've seen a Gantt chart that's been expanded to include the RACI information uh, so you might think about that as a possible option. Who is responsible and I'd like you to th reflect on this statement and to see if you can come up with the missing word or words that I have in the blank. There is at least one role with a participation type of responsible, although others can be blank to assist in the work. As a rule, this is one person. The answer to that is delegated. There is at least one role with a participation type of responsible, although others can be delegated to assist with the work. So the point that we're making here is it's very important to have an individual and a name or at least a role that can be identified and linked to a name uh, have one person who's been designated for as the responsible person. If there are other people involved, then those people should be reporting or be responsible to that one person through the delegation process. Second column, who is accountable? And there are two blanks to fill in here at the bottom, so I'll read through this. The one who is ultimately answerable for the correct and thorough completion of the deliverable or the task and the one who delegates the work to those responsible. This must be one person and is often the blank blank. answer I'm looking for there is this one person is often the project executive or the project sponsor. So it's extremely important again to have one person who is the accountable person, the sign-off person, the executive, the sponsor. Uh, that's an extremely important role. Third column, who should be consulted those whose opinions are sought. This is usually several people and they're typically subject matter experts. There is usually blank communication.
the answer here. There is usually two-way communication. So the idea is that there will be people who are consulted, who are given information, and there is an expectation that they will read that information, use it, reflect on it, and that they will provide some type of a response that then will influence what is being done by the project. Finally, the fourth column, who should be informed? Those who are kept up to date on progress, often only on completion of the task or deliverable. And there is usually just one way communication with the informed. In other words, they're given information about what's being done, but there is not an expectation or an opportunity for them to provide feedback. These are people that are affected by the blank of the project. And the answer there is these are people who that are affected by the outcome or the results of the project. So often you have a larger group of stakeholders who are very interested in what happens and they will be impacted or affected by it. And that could be at the recipient, at the level of partners and participants. It could also be at a level of your own organization or even from the donor communities. So that is the R-A-C-I.